Hello my delicious co-creators, Lilou here. I'm actually north of France in Calais at the refugee camp and I'm here spending the day to, you know, wow, so much emotion comes yeah. up when we get here. I'm here with Leon, that is, you're, you're from England and you come here to help, give a hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm Dutch actually, but uh, yes, I live in London, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I'm here to help. Yeah, I got a, a few months ago now, well, two months ago, someone asked me to help set up a kitchen here. And this is it, so the Ashram Kitchen, so I helped set that up. How many people are here in the, in the, in on this camp? Well, officially 6,000, but we as volunteer I believe it's more like 9,000. Yeah. No one knows exactly. People come here every day? Yes, we still have about 50 arrivals coming every day. Yeah. And, and, and food is coming, stuff are coming, there's abundance of things, but then there's all the issues, I guess, and volunteers too. Well, yes, there's not abundance of food and clothes and tents. Um, it, there's a shortage, yeah. But uh, there's also a, yeah, beautiful people here. So, yeah. hmm. why, why, what do you see here possible? I mean, is, does that give you hope to, 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 or, or not? I mean, is there a solution? What's going on? Yeah, I mean, the people here are beautiful. The stories they tell you are, you know, the people who they are, their, their journeys are very sad. Um, is a solution, I don't know. I mean, yes, I believe we can all solve it together, but our governments and the big organizations are not helping. So this, these people are here because they want to go to England. They believe England is the promised land, but also they have family or friends in England already who can help them settle, get a job, hopefully get asylum. That's why they want to go to England, because they know people there. And what's, you know, England is closed. They don't take people on uh, from here. So I don't know how's that going to be in the future, but that doesn't mean, yeah, you've seen the camp. We can't let people live like this. They're all human beings, so mud everywhere and things and people actually steal and so that there's some issues going on here people it's kind of the reptilian brain people try to survive so and i just came back from the church and i saw them praying though so there's beautiful things here a lot of solidarity too that you're witnessing Yes, you know, like in every society, 98% of people are beautiful and some, yeah, they steal and they try to grab and, you know, the, the problem is they live in tents which are made to live two weeks in the south of France, but these tents are standing here for weeks on end with the wind, the fierce wind by the sea here and they just snap. So yesterday morning after we had a storm, most tents were just flat. And of course, the despair is growing. People realize now security around the train is so big they can't go to England. The, the, the cold, the hunger, all that together makes that people, um, you know, the, the energy in the camp is changing. Yeah. It's getting cold here. Yes, it's very cold, yeah. yeah. And it's only the beginning. So it's like, what can we do? What do you think? Would you, you spend a lot of time here and you, you see all these people helping. And But what can we do from the other side of the world? Can we just, is the best thing to pray? I mean, is the best thing to stand stuff, to get initiatives, get idea, get things going? Because I have a feeling it's coming from us, the solution, and not so much from the government or... Well, your first question, can we pray? Yeah, I think we have to raise consciousness, but together with action, you know, just, you know, like the Dalai Lama said this week, it's a man-made problem. We can't ask God to solve it. So, yes, we have to raise consciousness, but also take actions. And action is, um, how do you say that? Um, careful action in the sense that uh, we co coordinated action, not just send stuff, ask the people who are on the ground, what do you need? You know, so often people send things which they collect, but they're not needed in camp. Like, we need shoes, but not high heels, you know. That's a simple solution. We need food, but not um, spaghetti hoops, which people send. So what I'm doing now with a small team is coordinating all the food so we can serve thousands of people here every day. We're building a kitchen of sites. We start that on Tuesday, it's Sunday today, where we can cook thousands of meals. So we need pallets full of carrots and onions and things like that. So donations are, in that sense, the most hand the, and there's a warehouse where all the donations like food and clothes are, um, you know, they're dropped and they sort it all out. So ask them what they need. And, um, you know, I mean, we need some kind of bastard brains to getting in there and creating some kind of system. So to enable all this inventory and all this to circulate and so that people know, I mean, they need, so it's like recreating kind of a, not a society, but a community and helping it. Yes, and another thing I think we need is 
I speak to a lot of people. Not everyone can come here or wants to come here or go to Lesbos or wherever it is and do something. That's fine. But we need more and more people who are aware and stand up and say, I want to, we need to do something. We can't live like this anymore. Because I think in our in our heritage, each and every one of us in our families have been migrants, had to go through problems, but we often forget. And how then can we say to other people, you can't have a better or safer life? These people just want to be safe. Most of them are flooding wars or tribes or killings or for whatever reason. You know, so we all have to stand up and say we're all human beings. That's really why I'm here. What do you say to people that are scared about that? Because they wake up fears in, in us, and it can also wake up fears in the population around or in other countries. What do you have to say about that? Well, I always tell them, listen, I'm an economic migrant. When, so when I'm at home in London and people say, Leon, why do you do that? I say, well, I came to London in 2001 to start a business. So I'm an economic migrant. And then I say, my surname, Arts, is a very Dutch name. It comes from the region where I'm from. Everyone will know Leon is from that region. It's not a common name. And, um, but then I say, am I? My mom's name was Belfort, so French name. And that part of the family had to, they were of French aristocracy 200 years ago. And they had to leave France because, you know, the French Revolution, they would be killed off. They came to Holland to, to be safe and peaceful. So how can I ever say to anyone, you can't have a better life? And I, all of us have that in our history, but we forget so quickly. So how can we say to other people, you can't do that? And I mean, I spoke to people who are close to the English government and we say, we have the systems, we have, you know, the UK, for example, and Holland and Belgium and France are built on migrants. We wouldn't exist without it. So we can, you know, we can solve this together. Is there something that you want to say, like here, if you come a little closer, yeah. because we're we're moving a little bit, but okay. is there is there like a message you want to come across or something that your heart wants to say or either for the people here or pray or some some the people, the, the co-creators watching, because we're yeah. a lot of co-creators yeah. here co-creating this or something maybe to co-create? Yeah, well, what I want to say to the people is you know, look in your heart, think from your heart and, you know, what would you do? What if you're in that situation? What if you... You know, let's say tomorrow morning your, your key doesn't work, you can't get in your house, you put your card in the cash machine and you can't get any cash out. What would you do? Where would you go? You go to friends and family and ask for help. But these people are our friends and family. So, I, you know, I want to create a movement of people where we say, I stand. What do you stand for in a common humanity? Because if we, like Martin Luther King said 50 years ago, take a stand. And I believe it's time to do that again. What Martin Luther King said all that time ago and did wonderful work for you know racism, basically, it's still as current today as, as it was then in different issues. Because I believe this migration crisis, it's a crisis of humanity, is the making or breaking of humanity. Because this migration is bigger than anyone thinks it is. There's a more, lot more people migrating and fleeing wars and poverty than we can imagine. Uh, hashtag too, that yes. I stand? Hashtag I stand. So we, we launched that very soon and I ask all of you, hashtag I stand and say, say what you think in our common humanity. As if millions of us do this, then our governments and big organizations will listen. Because there's a lot of great volunteers doing great work, but we need infrastructure behind it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and take actions that are aligned. Yes. Take actions that are aligned with 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 with, author, with authentically, you know, yes. because otherwise we're going to recreate a mess. Yes. And I think it's time now yeah. to this world can transform, can change, and and we can do a lot more than we think. You know, um, you know the, the 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 common phrase, "I'm just one person. What I, can I do?" But when you show, when you stand up and show up, and you start to use your creativity, but also your skill set, you know, together combine you'd be amazed and uh, you know I came to the camp and I cooked the first week now we coordinating all the food and it's amazing how then the right people come around you who do it a lot better than I do but because you stand up people will support you and then we can really solve this it's so close from London and there's all these brains there I keep on thinking of creating like an intranet or Wikipedia or so, something wiki that they could where people can just uh, add information on there and that we know exactly how to help because yeah. I think a lot of us want to help it's like how yeah. so yeah and, and donate to the right uh, because often people send groups but when we with the right money they, they can be bought on the ground and exactly what's needed because to be honest it's not that much money needed to solve it all
Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for doing what you're doing. And how many times per week are you spending here? I'm sort of one week here, one week at home, so something like that. Yeah. But we you stay around here. Yeah, I stay in a hotel in Kelly. I used to stay on camp, but that's too too intense. Yeah. Yeah, because things at night still happen. So. Yes. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a different time at night. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you for your heart. And I'm speaking from everybody, but I think, you know, thank you for being here and supporting and doing what you're doing. Okay, thank you, Lulu. Thank you. Much, much love to all of you, delicious co-creators. Bye-bye. Blessings. Thank you.